Okay then guys, welcome to part uh, four or five, part four of uh, how we're going to get source control set up um, to work with Unreal Engine 4 and integrated. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at setting it up so that your friends on an external network can uh, can see you. So what I've gone and done is set up a quick diagram here. So this external piece over here, this is your friend. Now this line here represents the side of your house. So you've got your server. You've got your home PC and you've got your router and in, router inside your house. Okay, this may be a different configuration depending on, but this is a general setup. Now, remember when I tried to connect to the server? Now, this was my main PC in the past video, right? The server was my main PC, and down here we had my laptop. Now, to connect, we had to put in the the main PC's IPv4 address, which was this one, which was uh, this one here, right? So I typed that in 0.166, which then connected me to the server. Uh, the way ports work are imagine um, imagine you've got traffic flowing, okay, and you're trying to sort it out. The red cars, the blue cars, the SUVs, the Lamborghinis, whatever. Now the ports basically are tunnels that only allow certain things through. So port, for example, port 166 will only allow traffic that's designated to port 166 through, or at least that's my understanding of ports. I may be wrong. If I'm wrong leave me a correction in the comments i'm actually really interested that's my understanding of it anyway so what we've got to do is we've got to say okay router any incoming traffic that's using port 166 needs to be sent to this computer here right because what it could do at the minute is it says okay i've got some stuff from 166 here and that's it it hits the router and then it just it just goes it does nothing right so the router needs to port forward that's what we're gonna be doing port forwarding the port forwarding needs to port forward any traffic on port 166 to the server which in this case is my main desktop pc so without further ado let's boot up a web page and you're going to go to your router's home page now this could be 192.168.1.1 0 0.1.254 0.1.10 it could be any number it could be any number up to 254. So point one point, any number up to 254. Uh, if you've got to try them all, you've got to try them all. But really, you know, you could usually Google this information, Google the make of your router, and you could probably find a logon address for it somewhere. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and do it for mine. So I'm going to log into my settings side of it, port forwarding. And now what you can see here is I have this perforce here that forwards to my Toshiba PC, which is my server, which is running on that IP address there. That's the local IP address of my of my server. Now, if I hit down here, configure. Um, nope, not that one. Uh, where is it? Is it under advanced settings? And then home oh, no, firewall port forwarding. Manage games and applications. Here we are. So perforce here. This is what I this is what I had to do for my BT home hub for router. So what I'm going to do is we're going to delete the Toshiba. We're going to delete the one that's existing. Give that a second to load. And we're going to add a new game or application, and it's on the port 166, 1666 even. I'll copy that. Uh, we're going to name this Perforce 2. Um, and we're not going to copy any settings for it. And the protocol is we're going to be using TCP or UDP, so we're going to leave it on any. Translate those to 1666. Add that. Apply. So Perforce 2, the game or application, I'm sorry about that, not the microphone there, the game or application uh, Perforce 2 now points to, uh, now corresponds to triple 1666. So back on up to port forwarding, we're going to select a game application, so I'm going to go find my Perforce 2. Again, this will be different for your router. So I'm, all I'm saying now, all this is basically saying is, okay, any traffic coming to 1666, send it on, send it, send the traffic for that forward on through to my desktop, which is this one here, right? So we're going to add that in as a, as a, as a rule now. Okay. So what happens is any external traffic that's coming in with 1666 will now hit my router. My router will say, okay, you're on 1666. And it'll say, who requested 1666? It'll look in here and it'll say, oh yeah, desktop T41N2LO requested all traffic from 1666 be sent through to him. I'm going to hit apply there. And now what we're actually going to do is going to go up to a tool here called Can You See Me? Now what Can You See Me does is it takes your external IP address. Let's see if we've got that up here. Your external IP address, right? So you've got the IP address of the router here that the world can see. This is the one that the world can see. This is how you basically get hacked when you get you know, knocked off and 
DDoS and whatever. This is the IP address that the world can the world cannot see these internal IP addresses, right? But it can see the external IP address. So that's my external IP address there. After this video, I'm going to basically reset my router, generate a new IP address. So, you know, that'll be invalid for you. You won't be able to do anything to me through this at this point. But the port to check is 1666. Now, remember, we've got the service here running. The server's running. The router has been told to forward all traffic to the server. All this tool is going to do is say, okay, I'm going to send some traffic to your external IP address. So here he is. Wait a minute. Let's find that. That's the tool there. Can you see me.org, right? It's sending some traffic down this line with the 1666 port. It's hitting the router. The router is then saying, okay, where are we going to send this? Oh, main PC requested it. It's then going to send it on through. And if it gets this far, main PC will issue a response that goes all the way back up. And can you see me will say, yep, okay, cool, success. I can see your server. So we're going to hit that. And you can see that there straight away, success, I can see your service. Now what I'm going to do, just to demonstrate this, I'm going to stop the server. We're going to run the check again. And you see, immediately we get an error. There's no server running. So when the server's not running, you can't, you can't, you, you know, 1666 is forwarded to my computer just fine, but it won't get there because there's no server running. Again, if I were to remove Perforce 2 from here, remove that. Now, I don't think this will work, but I'll be surprised if it does. Remember, now the server is still running. So the server's running. Check the port. And it'll take a bit longer, but we're going to get an error again. Because it's, you know, the root is getting all this information. It's the root is getting this request to 1666. And it's just saying, well, you know, 1666 not designate, isn't designated to go anywhere. Uh, and it just kind of blah, blah, blah. The data just goes into thin air. Connection times out. The data goes nowhere. Error. So like I said, the, the ports have to be forwarded like that. So we have to have that Perforce 2 in there. Uh, and we've also got to select which computer it's being forwarded to. And we've also got to obviously have the server running for it to detect that the server's there. So forward that port back up, the server's still running, check it, straight away, success. So that's how you can check that the server's running and you can access it from an external IP address. Now, okay, you want to give, so what you'd be doing is you'd be giving your friends, your friends this IP address, right? You'd be saying to your friends, okay, you know, ooh, I don't know actually why I'm putting this in the address, but I guess I'm just curious as to what would happen. I don't think anything would happen, but anyway. Yeah, so you'll you'll be giving that IP address to your friends, and your friends will be like, oh, that's his IP address. I know, for a bit of fun, I'm going to go ahead and do this to him. So how can we stop that? Now, you can, you could, so if you're working with strangers, one thing that I'd recommend you do is head over to noip.com, fire that up, sign up or sign in, I'm going to sign in real quick. We're going to sign in there. And you're going to go to add a host. And it already takes your external IP address. And then you make a host name. So if you're working on an FPS game, let's call this FPS game tut. And you could leave that as ddns.net. Um, and that's cool. So you're going to go ahead and basically just add that host. Um, so what you've got there, what that, what basically happens now is instead of your friends typing in this IP address into their perforce, they will now type in fpsgametuts.ddns.net colon 1666 and it will take them to the exact same place that this did. So I wonder if I can put in, a, I can't put in a custom in here. Um, let's see, port checker. I wonder if I can find one that allows me to check a specific port. Can I? Yes, okay, so what I can do now is I can take this IP here and then put colons and then uh, leave that there and put 1666 in the port. We can check it and it should. Hopefully this works. I've not actually used this website before. In fact, it, it's offline, so it's not going to work. Uh, okay, that website's down. Let's try this. Let's try this website. Yep, okay, cool. So it can see there. Now, instead of putting my external IP addressing and leaving myself exposed, it can now see that fpsgametut.ddns.net colon 1666 is open. So now to come on back to this diagram, what we've done here is... Oh, that got a bit messy, didn't it? What we've done now is we've added another server here, right? Now, this server knows my external IP address, right? But it doesn't give it out. 
it gives out uh, fpsgametalk.ddns.net. So what happens now is he says to ddns.net, I'd like to send some traffic through. The, tra the, the DDNS server then says, okay, where does that, that web address, what's that? That web address is actually pointing to the external IP address over here. So then that sends it on through over here. So this basically puts a line between the other people connecting to your network. This box here puts a kind of safety barricade. It could, I'm pretty sure it can be worked around, but it's a, it's a, if you feel a bit safer doing so, go ahead and do this. It puts a bit of a safety thing between uh, you and the outside world. So that people can people when they're connecting to your Perforce server will connect through this uh, through this service here, but it'll all still work the same as you saw with that second port forward there. It'll all still work the same. If we use this, the external IP address again, it'll just say it's still open. So it works either way. Just depends how whether you feel comfortable giving it out, giving your IP address out, or whether you want to hide your IP address or not. So that's that. That's that side of it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take note of this here. So fpsgametalk.ddns.net, right? And what I'm going to do is in part five, we're going to head, head on back over to my laptop. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my mobile tethering on, okay? I'm going to put my mobile tethering on. I'm going to record this on the same day. So take note, actually. What I want you to do is just make a mental note, make a note somewhere on your computer um, that my external IP address for this video is 81.129.110.125. That's my public IP address. Now, when I'm on the laptop and I'm on the mobile network, what'll happen is I'll be on a totally different public IP address. Now, let's not confuse the public IP address with the internal one, right? Because on the current system, this one here, with my laptop hooked up to the same router, his external IP address, the one here, the one here, will be the same as the computers. The external IP address doesn't change. It's for, the external IP address is for the house, right? But by hooking my laptop up, what I'm gonna be doing is effectively putting my laptop over here, right? So my laptop is now effectively out of the house on a totally different network. Um, this has been more of a lesson in networking and ports than it has in getting this set up, but it's all part and parcel of making this Perforce server open and available to your friends and to whoever it is that you're working on your project with. So I hope this has been helpful. Again, take note of that. Remember that because when we head on up, uh, when we head on over to the laptop, we're going to be on the mobile network, so we're going to be on a totally different network there. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to fire it up and we're going to connect to that Perforce server externally. Um, now, because, yeah, well, well, I'll figure it out then. Basically, I don't want to download the entire project on my mobile network because it's 600 meg and it will take hours. Um, but I'll demonstrate that you can connect to it through through the mobile network. Um, so, yeah, that's it for this video, guys. I hope this one has been informative too. I hope it's helped you get a bit further to setting that server up. Uh, as always, don't forget to comment, subscribe, and of course, leave a like, and I'll see you in the next video. Stay tuned for part five, guys. Also, that IP address is going to be gone, so don't be trying nothing. Thank you.